Hello everyone, today we will be covering every single class in Baldur's Gate 3. Yup, you heard me right, every class including the newest monk that was recently announced. I will also be including the subclasses, except the couple ones that I already covered in my new subclasses video that was released a couple days ago. Other than that, we will go through literally everything, including the best attributes for the classes, my thoughts about it, how strong it is. Well, you will just see for yourself. This video took me all day to make, so I hope you will find it at least a little bit helpful. Real fast, I just wanted to say a huge Thank you for watching my content. We are already approaching almost a thousand subscribers only after a couple uploads. So you guys are just exceeding my wildest dreams and expectations. Thank you so much for being here. I see your comments all the time. I try to respond to all of them. It's just so lovely to see this positive community forming on this channel. And I will do my best to, to put the best content I possibly can for you guys and girls. So stay tuned for that. Every day there will be a new video. If you want, you can also join my live stream at Twitch TV Kendra where I will be playing different RPGs until Baldur's Gate 3 come out. For example, yesterday we made a pretty funny character in early access of Baldur's Gate 3 that I will be playing through on my stream so if you want you can go check it out but for now enjoy the content. First up we have the Barbarian which gets the most hit points per level out of any class in the game at a whopping 12. The staple ability of the Barbarian is the Rage feature which lets you deal two extra damage with melee and improvised weapons and also makes you resistant to all physical damage and also lets you have advantage on strength checks and saving throws which is just great during combat. It lasts for 10 turns and it's gonna end early if you don't make an attack action on your turn or if something doesn't attack you. It's actually gonna end prematurely so make sure to hit those targets right away when you get into the combat. It is also important to note that you can't cast or concentrate on spells while raging so if you have for example an item that gives you some blessing that you can cast from another a class and you're gonna start raging you're gonna lose concentration on that ability and also you have to take into consideration that if you want to maybe multi-class into a spell casting class you won't be able to cast those spells while in the rage effect. Another ability you get right away as a Barbarian is Unarmored Defense, which lets you add your Constitution modifier to your Armor class, which means you can forego using Armors right away if you so choose, because your AC gonna be raised based on your Constitution, but usually Armor will trump over this feature in the early levels, and then when you get your Constitution up, perhaps you will want to opt to actually go a bit lighter without having Armor on you. It's also important to remember that Heavy Armor impedes your Rage, so you won't be able to use it if you wear a heavier Armor than me. Medium. When it comes to ability points, you want to focus on that strength and constitution and also possibly dexterity if you forgo the heavier armors. Wisdom affects your saving throws from spells, which can be a weak point of the barbarian, so it's good to have a decent score. Obviously, if you want to roleplay a bit smarter barbarian, you can spread your stats however you want, raise that intelligence if you want, maybe charisma, but honestly, if you want to make the biggest powerhouse of a barbarian, you want to focus on that strength, constitution and dexterity based on your build. At the third level, you get to decide your subclass between the Berserker, Wildheart and the newly announced Wild Magic. If you choose the Berserker subclass, it turns your Rage into a Frenzy, which grants you two new abilities, namely Frenzied Strike and Enraged Throw. Those are great abilities because they let you use your bonus action to make another attack even during early levels, which means you are one of the few classes that actually get to use two attacks per turn and also the Enraged Throw, which is amazing because you can throw anything and it does bludgeoning damage and depending on the size of the thing you throw and also your strength it's gonna deal more damage so you're gonna be throwing everything around all the time and it's it's hilarious our second choice is wild heart which gives us the speak with animal spells right away which is very useful to have and also bestial heart you are going to choose your animal aspect starting with the bear which gives us a very strong bear heart ability which means that while you rage you're gonna get unrelenting ferocity which makes you resistant to all types of damage except Psychic. You also get Unrelenting Ferocity, which is a self-heal that you can use on yourself, very handy to have. Second is Eagle Heart, which is a very mobile animal aspect to choose. Foes have disadvantage on opportunity attacks against you, which means you can move more freely during combat. You also get to use Dash as a bonus action, which is very nice to have, similar to a Rogue. You also get Diving Strike, which lets you leap down onto a foe below you, knocking them prone. You do not take falling damage and you must be at least one and a half meter above your target. Third option is Elk, which also raises your mobility. It gives you Primal Stampede that, le that increases your movement speed by 4.5 meters. You also get Primal Stampede, which charges you forward, attacking all enemies in the way and possibly knocking them prone. It's important to note that this attack does not provoke opportunity attacks. Our fourth option is Tiger, which gives us Tiger's Bloodlust, which means our jumping distance will be increased by 4.5 meters. Second ability we get while raging is Tiger's Bloodlust, which makes us lash out to up to 3 enemies at once and make them bleed. A very powerful 
powerful AoE area of effect damage option. And last but not least we have the wolf heart who is the most supportive of the aspects because it gives us inciting howl which gives your allies advantage on melee attack rolls against enemies within 2 meters of you. And second ability makes our allies move faster around us. And just for flavor you get to change your appearance when you choose this subclass from the different variety of piercings that you can choose and you don't have to necessarily pick the animal aspect with the correct appearance you can mix and match them however you want. And our third choice will be wild magic which is not yet in the game it was recently recently announced but we already know the effects that we are gonna get when we choose this subclass. With this class you get the wild surge ability while raging which gives you different effects randomly chosen from a table of 8 different options. I actually covered those options in my previous video from the subclasses you can find it in the description and there you will be able to see what beneficial effects you get while raging and it's also very important to know that all the effects are beneficial so you won't do something bad to yourself while raging. It is important to note that it is the most supportive of the Barbarian subclasses because it also gets bolstering magic on level 6 which lets you bolster a companion. As an action you can touch one creature which can be yourself and confer one of the following benefits of your choice to the creature. For 10 minutes the creature can roll a d3 whenever making an attack or ability check and add that number roll to the d20. So a bit similar to the bard's inspiration. And the second option is to roll a d3 and the creature regains one expanded spell slot so you can also bolster your caster companions to help them regain some spell slots up to level 3. If you are going all the way to level 10 as a barbarian you're gonna get unstable backlash which immediately after you take damage or fail a saving from while raging you can use your reaction to roll on the wild magic table and immediately produce the effect rolled. This will replace the current magic effect you have which basically mean you can re-roll the wild magic effect that you got while beginning your rage and replace it with something more handy in the current situation. It will make you very versatile in combat because every turn you'll be able to change your wild magic aspect depending on the situation you find yourself in. Also on level 5 all barbarians gets the extra attack feature and fast movement which increases your movement speed while not wearing heavy armor. And that concludes the barbarian. Next up we have the bard class which is a hybrid of a caster with a fighter potentially that gets two cantrips right away with some unique ones to the class and also four spell slots so right away you get some magical abilities. You also get to pick your starting instrument for flavor and you get eight hit points per level. Level. You are also proficient in the dexterity and charisma saving throws, you get light armor proficiency, simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapier and short swords. The staple of the bard is bardic inspiration which inspires an ally to go beyond their capabilities with your performance. You can add a 1d6 bonus to their attack roll, ability check or saving throws. The ability points you want to focus on as a bard is charisma which defines your spellcasting ability and spell slots and depending on your build, dexterity or strength if you decide to be more in the thick of combat, dexterity is great because it raises your AC and you can also use the weapons proficiency that you get as a bard but there are also some cool strength variants that you can use and be more of a damage dealer slash support damage hybrid. Most bards however will go the dexterity route and don't neglect your constitution and intelligence for higher skill checks. On level 3 you get to decide your subclass between the college of lore, college of valor and the newly announced college of swords. College of lore gives you additional proficiency that you can pick from and also cutting water words which is a very powerful ability that you can use instead of your bardic inspiration to instill a 1d6 penalty to attack rolls or ability checks on your enemies. On level 5 the cutting words penalty increases to 1d8 and at 1d10 the cutting words penalty increases even further to a swooping 1d10. College of Valor however gives you medium armor proficiency and shield proficiency and also martial weapons that you can use so you are more versatile as a fighter bard. Your bardic inspiration also changes to combat inspiration which lets you add a 1d6 bonus to the damage of the next weapon attack, also it can be used defensively to improve your armor class against an incoming attack. And the third subclass that we are going to get when the full game releases is the College of Swords. Similarly to College of Valor, it also gives us bonus proficiency in martial weapons and at third level we get medium armor. We also get to choose a fighting style similar to a fighter between dueling and two weapon fighting. You also get Blade Flourish which lets you get a plethora of different abilities you can use instead of your Bardic Inspiration. I covered it in my previous video on the new subclasses that are coming to the game, you can check it out in the description. 
Also, on level 6 you are going to get an extra attack which is usually reserved for the martial classes, so it is unique to the bard that you're actually gonna be able to make 2 attacks per turn starting on level 6. All bards also get improved bardic inspiration on level 5, which increases their bardic inspiration dice roll to 1d8. Not only that, you get font of inspiration, which now lets you restore your bardic inspiration on short rests. Now we come to the cleric, which are a bit more unique because you choose your subclass right away as you create one. On release, clerics will be able to choose one out of 7 available different domains. It is important to note that all clerics get level 1 spell slots unlocked right away, they get wisdom saving throws proficiency and charisma, they also get light armor, medium armor, shield and simple weapon proficiency. Unlike wizards, clerics have all the spells unlocked right away, of course given the level that you're at, and you'll be able to choose them and prepare them before a long rest. You are also able to choose 3 different cantrips which are spells that you can use all the time before needing to expand your spell slots. As a cleric, wisdom defines your spellcasting ability and your spell slots, so it is important to pump this wisdom as high as possible and also some strength and constitution if you decide to be a melee oriented cleric. But you can just as well be a dexterity based cleric which sits in the backline, support their allies and shoot enemies with a crossbow for example. So the first subclass we got is life domain which makes for great healers. You also get heavy armor proficiency and disciple of life which lets the target regain additional hit points equal to 2 plus the spells level. Depending on the domain you pick you're also gonna have some spells prepared for you already. You will always have the Bless and the Cure Wound spell for example as a life cleric prepared in your spellbook. Now when you choose the light domain you get some unique spells based on the light magic and also fire. You will get burning hands on level 1 and most importantly you also get spells like fireball on level 5 so you can make a more caster oriented offensive cleric if you so choose. You will also get warding flame as an ability which lets you shield yourself with divine light and use your reaction to impose disadvantage on an attacker possibly causing their attacks to miss. Next up we have the trickery domain which probably some of you are already familiar with because shadow heart is one. You get the charm person and the disguise self spells and also the action called blessing of the trickster which can grant another creature advantage on stealth checks. There will also be 4 different domains available to us on the full release of the game which I actually covered extensively in my subclass video if you want to watch it I go over the remaining domains there. Clerics also get the channel divinity ability at level 2 which is different based on the domain you pick. Also all clerics are specialized in fighting undead and all of them get turn undead on level 3 and destroy undead on level 5. Next up we have the druid who similarly to cleric gets their spells prepared ahead of time before a long rest. You also get wisdom and intelligence saving throws, light armor proficiency, medium and shields and also a plethora of different weapons you can use but most of them are from the simple category. You also get 2 cantrips to choose from with some unique ones like the shillelagh and thorn whip. Druids also get their spellcasting ability based on wisdom so make sure to pump up this ability and also depending on the build you want to take you want some dexterity or strength and don't neglect constitution. What's unique to the druid is that you choose your subclass at level 2. You will be able to choose between circle of the land and circle of the moon and also the newly announced circle of spores which I covered extensively in my subclasses video. Circle of the land focuses more on casting and you also get natural recovery which lets you replenish expanded spell slots while out of combat. Circle of the Moon however gives you combat wild shape which further boosts your spell shifting ability and also gives you lunar mend which expanding a spell slot you can regain hit points while in wild shape. As you level up a circle of the moon druid you're gonna get additional wild shape forms starting with the bear which lets you transform into a beefy bear with 30 hit points. On level 3 you get to choose which land you come from and depending on your pick you're gonna have different spells available from different spell lists of other classes. For example you can have the Blur and Silence which is normally exclusive to the spellcasters of sorcerers and wizards and also you have different abilities from other classes. For example if you pick Coast you get the Mirror Image from the wizard spell list and Misty Step which is gonna make you even more mobile in combat. When the full game releases we are also going to have available the Circle of the Spores Druid which is a pretty unique class and I covered it extensively in my new subclasses video so go ahead and check it out if you want. Now we arrive at the classic fighter. Fighter gets 10 hit points per level by default and also strength and constitution saving throws proficiency and most proficiencies in weapons and armor. They also get the second wind class action right away which lets you self heal in combat a little bit. And perhaps most importantly they get to choose their fighting style ranging from archery, defense, dueling, great weapon fighting, protection and two weapon fighting. 
You can't really go wrong with any of those options, it all depends on the build you want to make. However, if you decide to wield two-handed weapons, obviously great weapon fighting is something you want to take, and if you want to wield two weapons, two weapon fighting is the way to go, also defense if you want to be a more tanky character, but the fighter also make great archers with the archery combat style. The ability points you want to go with as a fighter, if you're gonna choose to be in melee, are strength and constitution most importantly, because strength gonna let you do more damage and hit more often, and constitution allows you to take more punishment as you're gonna have more hit points. It's also worth considering to raise your wisdom quite a bit because fighters usually don't have very good saving throws against magic and wisdom can help you with that. Taking dexterity however depends on your build, if you're going to wear heavy armor you don't need much dexterity, but if you opt to be a more agile fighter or perhaps an archer, you obviously want to raise your dexterity instead of strength. On level 2 fighters get the powerful action surge ability, which makes you push yourself beyond your limits, gaining an extra action, which means you can actually make another attack during combat. And on level 3 you will be able to pick between the battlemaster subclass, the eldritch knight and also the newly announced champion. Battlemasters get the unique superiority dice feature which lets you roll additional things during combat as a maneuver. For example you can pick rally which gives additional hit points to an ally or for example a menacing attack which when you spend your superiority dice you will get the frightened effect on your enemy and also deal additional 1d8 damage. You can pick three of those maneuvers right away. You can also decide to be an eldritch knight which gives you some spell slots from the wizard spell list. Just make sure that if you decide to be this kind of fighter, you want to raise your intelligence quite a bit because it's gonna define your spell slots and your spellcasting abilities. Also, it's important to note that it doesn't turn you into a full spellcaster, you will progress your spellcasting as one third of a wizard class every level. The third class we're going to be able to choose on full release of the game is the champion subclass, which gives us improved critical on level 3, which means we're gonna skull criticals more often. We're also gonna have other abilities, but I'm sure Larian will alter it a little bit in game, because on level 7 the ability is a bit underwhelming, but then on level 10 we also get an additional fighting style to choose, so for example you can add an archery style to your existing uh, fighting styles to perhaps be more versatile. I also covered this subclass more intensively in my new subclasses video. Paladin Paladins, similarly to the cleric, pick their domain right away on level 1. In the case of the paladin, they are called oaths. First up, we have the classical Oath of Devotion, which gives you an action called Holy Rebuke that does 1d4 radiant damage to anyone who hits you or your companion with a melee attack. Sadly, it is an action, not a bonus action, so it takes away from your potential attack on your turn, so it's not very powerful currently. The second subclass you can take as a paladin is the Oath of the Ancients. It gives you the Healing Radiance class action, which is a heal over time that you can give to yourself or allies that heals 3 hit points in this case and regain additional 3 hit points at the start of your next turn. It scales with your Charisma ability score and is a bonus action. All Paladins also get the Lay on Hands ability and the Divine Sense, which makes you have advantage on attack rolls against Celestials, Fiends and Undead. Lay on Hands is another healing ability that all paladins get, it makes you heal a creature or yourself and also cure diseases and poisons. The third somewhat hidden subclass of the paladin is the Oath Breaker, you have to break your oath as a paladin during gameplay to be able to access this additional subclass. It is a darker more necromancy focused paladin, as an Oath Breaker you get additional actions as you level up. On level 2 you get the Spiteful Suffering action which makes the target take 1d4 plus 3 necrotic damage each turn and also your attack rolls have advantage. And and on level 3 you get the Control Undead, Dreadful Aspect, Hellish Rebuke and Inflict Wound Spells. It's also important to note that you get to keep your Lay on Hands ability as an Oathbreaker. On the full release of the game, Paladins will also get access to the Oath of Vengeance subclass, which has some powerful abilities. For example, on level 3 you get the powerful channel divinity called Vow of Enmity, that as a bonus action lets you speak up against an enemy and gain advantage on attack rolls against him for 1 minute or until he drops to 0 hit points. You also get other abilities that I covered extensively in my additional subclasses video. All Paladins get Wisdom and Charisma saving throws proficiency and also can wear all armors and most of weapons. As a paladin, charisma defines your spell slots and your spell power, so you want to boost that charisma as much as possible, and also strength so you hit harder. And as with most melee classes, you want your constitution to be decent, so you can take more punishment. If you so choose, you can neglect intelligence and wisdom somewhat, because paladins already have pretty good defenses against most spells, and also are immune to fear later on, and also, well, intelligence, most paladins are what is called lawful stupid. But of course, your doesn't have to be. Rangers are a mix of a martial class with a bit of spellcasting. First up, on level 1, you can pick your favorite enemy. You have a choice between Bounty Hunter, Keeper of the Veil, Mage Breaker, Ranger Knight and Sanctified Stalker. 
The most unique out of those, in my opinion, is the Ranger Knight, because it gives you heavy armor proficiency. If you choose to go for a strength ranger, you will be able to wear this heavy armor right away. Of course, you should pick your favorite enemy, depending on what kind of ranger do you want to make yourself. You also get to pick your natural explorer trait, which lets you pick another additional ability. For example, you can be a Wasteland Wanderer Fire, that will make you take half the damage from fire attacks. All rangers get strength and dexterity saving throws proficiencies, and also light and medium armor, and heavy if you decide to be a ranger knight and also shield proficiency and most weapons. When it comes to ability points it all depends on the kind of ranger that you want to make. If you want to go the dexterity route you raise the dexterity as high as possible and also keep in mind to have at least 14 wisdom because that defines your spell slots. But rangers are a very versatile class and you can also opt to go the strength route then you max your strength instead of dexterity to the max and also wear heavy armor. On level 2 you get to choose your fighting style similarly to a fighter you can choose from archery, defense, dueling and two weapon fighting. On level 3 you get to choose your subclass between the hunter and beastmaster and also the newly announced gloomstalker which I covered in my previous subclasses video. So first up as a hunter you get to pick between colossus slayer, giant killer and horde breaker which gives you some additional flavor to your attacks and also can be very powerful. For example colossus slayer once per turn your weapon attacks deal an extra 1d8 damage if the target is below its hit points maximum, a very powerful subclass. You can also focus more on area damage with the horde breaker which lets you target two creatures standing close to each other attacking them in quick succession. And Giant Killer makes you specialize in fighting bigger enemies. Now Beastmaster lets you summon an animal companion of your choosing that will fight alongside you during your journey. I did cover the Gloomstalker subclass already in my previous video on new subclasses, but I want to go through the features with you again real fast. As a Gloomstalker you get a couple of additional spells, for example Disguise Self, Rope Trick which is not in the game yet and Fear. But most importantly you get the Dread Ambusher ability. At the start of your first turn of each combat your walking speed will be increased and last until the end of your turn. If you take the attack action on that turn you can make one additional weapon attack as part of that action, which means your initiative will be very important to you and you will be able to dispatch those enemies quickly right away at the start of combat. You also get Umbral Sight which extends your dark vision significantly. And now on to the rogues. Rogues get dexterity and intelligence saving throws proficiency and they are also skilled in wearing light armor, simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers and short swords. The unique ability of the rogue is of course the sneak attack which lets you do more damage when you have advantage against your target. As a rogue you almost always want to focus on dexterity, have a little bit of constitution so you don't die from a fly flying around you, also some intelligence because you get better skill checks and rogues are plenty good at that. A bit of wisdom is also good to have because it improves your saving throws against spells and charisma is of course up to you depending if you want your character to be the face of the party. Rogues can also specialize further with two skills of their choice, making your skill checks and two given abilities be twice as effective. On level 3 you'll be able to pick your rogue subclass, choosing from arcane trickster, thief and the newly announced assassin. Arcane trickster is a bit similar to arcane knight where you get spell slots available to you as a rogue and also an improved mage hand spell. Your spellcasting level is one third of that of a wizard and you get some nifty tricks along the way. As a thief subclass however you get the fast hands and second story work feature. Unlike in tabletop, fast hands lets you get an additional bonus action including attacks during your turn which makes you quite versatile in combat. You will also be more resistant to falling damage. As an assassin that I did cover in my previous video on new subclasses, you get an ability called assassinate which makes you even deadlier against unaware opponents. You have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet. In addition any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. Also important to note that all rogues get the cunning action dash ability and on level 5 you get the uncanny dodge when when an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack you can use your reaction to have the attacker's damage against you. Next up we have the sorcerer which subclass you pick right away on character creation. You get to pick between wild magic, draconic bloodline and the newly announced storm sorcerer. As a wild mage you get the tides of chaos ability which gives you advantage on your next attack roll, ability check or saving throw if you activate it it's your choice and also increases the chance of a wild magic surge that's gonna happen afterwards. And what is wild magic? Well it's an effect that takes effect after you cast a spell and it can be both beneficial or detrimental to you. There is a whole table of effects that can happen and some 
some of the results can be pretty hilarious. The Draconic Bloodline subclass is a bit more resilient. It lets you pick a Draconic Ancestor which defines some of your additional spells and also on level 6 you will do more damage with the associated element. There is also another subclass called Storm Sorcery which I already covered extensively in my new subclass video. As a sorcerer you want to focus on your charisma as much as possible because it defines your spell slots and your spellcasting ability, you also can get some dexterity to be a bit more dodgy and constitution so you don't die right away in combat. When multiclass will come to the game, which I have a video on, you can also make some great Gish characters with a sorcerer, because of how resilient they are, they can make for some great Gish characters, which means they can both be good in melee and also cast some impressive spells. All sorcerers also make you create sorcery points, which extends your spell slots even further. On level 2 you also get two meta magic feats, which for example lets you extend your spells or make them twinned, which means for example a spell that normally would target just one creature now targets two of them. It's important to note that it casts a sorcery point in order to do this ability. Then on level 3 you can also pick an additional meta magic feat, for example heightened spell which is very powerful. All of those features combined make sorcerer a great blaster, which means they are great at casting damage with spells and also can cast them often and just make chaos on the battlefield. Warlocks also pick their subclass right away. We have the Fiend and the Great Old One available to us right now, but when the full game releases we also gonna have the Archfey available to us. More often than not, Warlocks focus on their Eldritch Blast ability, which is a cantrip that they use throughout the game and it grows more powerful as they level up. Warlocks also have some unique spells to choose from, like Armor of Agathis, Arms of Hadar and Hellish Rebuke on first level for example. Warlocks can also wear light armor right away in the game, so you are a bit more sturdy and have a bit more AC as a caster. When it comes to ability points, Warlock use Charisma for their spells, so pump it up as much as possible, and also you can get some Dexterity and Constitution to be a bit more sturdy. On level 2, all Warlocks get to choose their Eldritch Invocation. For example, they can pick Agonizing Blast, which makes them add your Charisma modifier to your Eldritch Blast, which is very powerful. You could also get the Devil's Sight's ability, which gives you improved Dark Vision, which can be very useful. On level 3, you will also sign a Pact with your Patron. Right now in the game, only Pact of the Chain is available, but there is also the Pact of the Blade coming when the full game releases. For example, Pact of the Chain gives you a Find Familiar feature, and you can summon an Imp or a Quasi. There is also the third subclass coming, called the Archfey. Archfey War Warlocks will get an expanded spell list which includes for example Fairy Fire, Sleep, Calm Emotions, Phantasmal Force, Dominate Beast and Greater Invisibility. Of course remember that the subclasses that are not yet in the game will be a bit different in it than from the tabletop edition of D&D. So on level 1 we will most likely get some version of Fey Presence ability, Misty Escape on level 6 and Beguiling Defenses on level 10. The Classic and the Versatile Wizard class. You get to pick 3 different cantrips at the beginning of the game which are the spells that you can use all the time as a wizard. And you also get to pick 6 spells on level 1 that replenish on long rests. Wizards of course are proficient in saving throws against intelligence checks and also wisdom. They can wield daggers, quarter staves and light crossbows. Their unique action is arcane recovery which lets you replenish expanded spell slots while out of combat. As a wizard you always want to focus on your intelligence as it defines your spell slots and your spell potency. You can also opt to get some dexterity and constitution to make you a bit sturdier. Some wisdom is decent to have to improve your skill checks and also makes you more resistant to different spells. Else. Now wizards get to choose their subclass at level 2. Currently at the game we only have evocation and abjuration to choose from, but on the full release of the game we actually gonna have all 8 schools of magic available to it us. It would take us forever to go over every single of the wizard spell school right now, so I will actually make an additional video in the near future, so stay tuned for that. Just know that each of the school have its own flavor, for example evocation lets you create pockets of safety within your evocation spells, which means that allies automatically succeed their saving throws and take no damage from your spells. Now monks are confirmed to come to Baldur's Gate 3 when the full game releases, but currently we do not have them in early access, so I will go with you over the abilities of the monk and also what can you expect when they will arrive in our game. Monks get 8 hit points per level plus your constitution modifier, get proficiency in simple weapons and short swords, and also have proficiencies in saving throws in strength and dexterity. For skills they can choose 2 from acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion and stealth checks. Beginning at level 1, monks get an armored defense which lets them add their wisdom modifier to their AC, so to their armor class, which makes them dodge attacks easier. But that will only apply when you are not wearing armor. They also get martial arts which let them use their dexterity instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls of their unarmed strikes and monk weapons. When you use an attack action with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon on your turn, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action. For example, if you take the attack action and attack with a quarter stave, you can also make an unarmed strike as a bonus action, assuming you haven't already taken a bonus action this turn. 
And on level 2 you're gonna gain something called Key, which is an expendable resource that you can use during combat. For example, you will get Flurry of Blows, which immediately after you attack in your turn, you can spend one Key Point to make two additional unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Or you can use Patient Defense, which makes you use one Key Point to take the Dodge action as a bonus action on your turn. There is also the Step of the Wind, which makes you spend one Key Point to take the Disengage or Dash action as a bonus action on your turn, and you can and your jump distance is also doubled for the turn. On level 2 you'll also get an Armored Movement, which as long as you're not wearing armor will increase your speed by 10 feet, so that means that you will be able to move further in combat. On level 3 you will get the Deflect Missiles feature, but we have to still see how it's gonna be implemented in Baldur's Gate 3. And as with all Martial classes you will also get an additional attack on level 5, which means you can now make 2 attacks per turn starting on level 5. You will also get Stunning Strike, which, when you hit another creature with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to attempt a Stunning Strike. The target must succeed a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of the next turn. You also get a bunch of different abilities as you level up, but I'm gonna be covering that in future videos. Now when it comes to the subclasses of the monk, we're gonna have three available. Way of the Open Hand, Way of Shadow, which is your more rogue type character, and Way of Four Elements, which is more of your uh, spellcasting monk. I actually did cover those subclasses extensively already in my new subclass video. <laughs> Ooh, that was a long one. Thank you so much for watching. If you went through the whole video, kudos to you and also let me know in the comments below what is your favorite class and also what would you like to see from me in the future videos. For now, this is it. Visit me on my live stream at twitch.tv if you want and I'll see you again very soon.